Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll be showing you how to run your custom YOLO V4 object detector with TensorFlow and TensorFlow Lite, perfect for mobile or edge devices. I'll be walking you through step-by-step -step how I convert my custom YOLO V4 object detector that detects license plates into a TensorFlow and TensorFlow Lite model so that I can run it on images, video, and webcam using TensorFlow. As always, smash that like button, and I hope you enjoy. As always, guys, first things first, to get the code, you're going to go look in the description of the video, and I will post the link to the GitHub repository. It's the AI guys code, TensorFlow, YOLO v4, TF Lite, the exact same repository I used for my previous video. But in today, we're going to go over how to run the code on your custom object detector. So prerequisite for this video is that you already have a custom object detector trained. Uh, if you don't already have this, I recommend checking out one of my previous videos as well. It will go over, I'll pop it up above, it'll go over how to train your own custom YOLO v4 object detector in the cloud for free, uh, extremely fast, and you can get up and running uh, in no time. So go do that if you don't already have a custom object detector and then come back. So I'm gonna assume now that you have trained your own custom YOLO v4 object detector and we're gonna move forward with the tutorial. In my previous video, I showed how to clone the code as well as for this repository, as well as getting it running with TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite on the pre-trained out of the box YOLO v4 object detector that's trained on over 80 classes. So if you haven't checked out that video, I recommend checking it out first. I'll link it up above and go ahead and check that one out. If you're new to object detection, it's a great video to get you up and running. Uh, but this video is purely for how to show you guys how to, to run your own custom uh, YOLO v4 object detectors using TensorFlow and TensorFlow Lite. So we will move forward um, I'm not going to show you guys how to clone the code as I did that in my previous video, as well as getting it started, um, getting up and running. I'm going to be using the Anaconda version that I set up in pre my previous tutorial. Um, so you're going to see me Conda activate this YOLO v4 GPU environment. But as always, you can just pip install the requirements if need be. Uh, so get the requirements set up and then let's hop right back into it. Uh, so. I've already cloned the code in here and I've CD'd into the, the folder. And then I'm just going to go conda activate YOLO v4 GPU. That's the name of the environment. And it's going to go ahead and now it shows that I'm, have the, I'm in the side of the environment with all the required dependencies. So once you have your environment set up or you've gone ahead and downloaded all the required dependencies, it now comes time to go and get that custom trained dot weights file that you previously trained on. So based off my previous video where I did it in using Google Collab in the cloud, I'm going to go ahead and get that file. So it's in my YOLO v4 backup folder where it got saved to. And these are all my saved weights from my training. And then I'm just going to go ahead and grab the last one. So YOLO v4 obj last that's my uh most up-to-date one that got trained the most on we're just going to go ahead and right click and then download it so you're going to have to go ahead and grab your dot weights file and then there's one more file we need to configure the tensorflow model and it's going to be your object dot names file that has your classes in it once per line so we're just going to go ahead and download this as well and it's going to take a couple of minutes here for the uh, dot weights file to download as it is quite a big file. So I'll come back when it's fully downloaded. So once the files have successfully downloaded, um, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and rename them. So I'm going to rename my custom weights. I'm just going to rename it to custom dot weights so that I know that's my custom weights. And I'm going to right click and rename my object dot names to just custom dot names. Um, for simplicity's sake. Uh, and then you're gonna go ahead and control C to copy the custom dot weights. And you're gonna go to wherever you saved your code to, where you saved the repository. So mine's in my C drive 
repos, and then it's TensorFlow, you'll be for TF Lite. And then you're gonna go ahead into the data folder. So once again, from the home repository, you're gonna go into the data folder and alongside your other YOLO v4.weights, you're just gonna go ahead and paste it in there. So there we go, we've got my custom.weights. And now I go back to my downloads and I'm gonna grab my custom.names. So I'm gonna copy that, control C. And then I'm gonna go back to my repository where I saved it, right back. And then this one goes into your data folder as well, but then it goes into the classes folder. So data classes, and then you're just gonna paste it in here beside these other .names files. So there we go, there's my custom .names. So now we're gonna go back to your command shell and I'm just gonna run code dot to open up my code editor. This opens up VS code, but if you use a different code editor, just open it up in there. And then here we are. So here's the file we're gonna to wanna to change to enable our custom TensorFlow uh, model. So you're gonna go into the into the folder core. So from the, the home TensorFlow, you'll be for TF Lite folder. You're just gonna go into core and you're gonna go ahead and open config.py. So I've got it open here. And the only line you have to change within the code base in order to enable your custom uh, model is you're going to go ahead and change in the config where it points to the classes file. Um, it's going to go ahead and change that to our custom.names file. So right now it's pointed at the pre-trained coco.names uh, file, which has the 80 classes. So if you were using the pre-trained, like my previous video, you would leave this. That's why we don't, didn't change it. But for our custom, we're going to go ahead and change this to our custom.names and save it. We've saved it. And what this does is when it loads in your model and saves the model, it reads this file to know the proper size of how many classes your trained model is on, how many it's actually been trained for. So that's why it goes ahead and reads in your custom.names. Uh, so I've only trained my custom object detector from my previous video on license, a license plate detector. So it's got one class. So if we were gonna go actually into the data classes and open up my custom.names. It's only got the one class license plate, but if we look in the coco.names, you can see it loads in all of these classes that it's trained on. So our custom, my custom detector for the sake of this video is just trained on one single class. So now if we go back to my uh, readme of my repository and we scroll on down to running YOLO before using just plain TensorFlow and not TensorFlow Lite, to use the custom model, we're gonna run this com command right here. So I'm gonna copy it. And what this does is instead of pointing to the old weights file, uh, the pre-trained one, it points to our custom.weights. So if you didn't call it custom.weights, make sure to edit this line so that it uh, doesn't point to a folder that or a file that doesn't exist. And then we're gonna output it as checkpoints and custom. So those are really the only changes you have to make. You point to your custom weights and update the config file to point to the custom.names. So now I can go in here and just right click and paste it in. And it's gonna go ahead and uh, save my darknet YOLO v4 model that we trained on as a tensorflow.pb model file. So it's pretty cool and pretty sweet. And in a second, I'm gonna let it run and then I'll hop back in and we will show it in action. So if everything went successfully, which I hope it did, you should see an output like this that shows your total parameters and means it's saved uh, your custom model into a TensorFlow model. So now you should be able to go ahead and actually run detector. So I can go here and then I've actually set it up to run the custom detector. So I'm just gonna copy this line and this uh, is gonna run it on a picture of a car that I've saved in my images folder. So data images car.jpg. You guys won't have this car.jpg so just upload an image to this images folder of whatever you are trying to detect, whatever your custom object detector is trained for, and it'll work just fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that command in here. It's gonna go ahead and execute, and hopefully it'll work successfully. It's loading in the model right now as we speak, and you'll see hopefully that, fingers crossed, that it works uh, as planned, which I'm sure it will. Uh, and it should be able to detect license plate on my image of a car. So it's just loading up on my GPU right now. And then in a second, it will show the detection. It will output it with the bounding box 
around the license plate uh, as expected. So let's see this bad boy run. And there we go. Let me enlarge the image for you guys. And you can see that with a 98% accuracy, my model has picked up the license plate pretty spot on perfectly around it. So it's working correctly, which we like to see. And if you didn't check my previous video, it actually saves your detections. So if we go back out and we go to this detections folder, it will actually go ahead and save the image uh, in this folder. So you always have it saved. Uh, so if you exited by accident, you can just go check this folder and you'll see the image saved. And now we can actually run our custom object detector on video as well. So oh, let's, let me get back up there. We're going to go ahead and run this command right here for Yolo V4 in video. And it just points to our custom model and it points to a video that I've uploaded of a few cars. So once again, you won't have this video of the cars because that's what my, my custom model is trained on for license plates. Um, so once again, go to this data video folder and upload your own uh, custom.mp4 file, which you can find online at like sites like Pexels or Pixabay. Um, they have great free videos uh, that you can just download and test out your model with. So we're going to go back to the command shell and we're going to paste in the custom command for detecting the video. So it's going to once again load in the model and then it's, run it, it's loading up my GPU and configuring it. And then it's going to go ahead and run our custom license plate model, Yolo V4, on a video that I've just taken from the web. So, so here we go. The video's pretty large file, uh, video file. So it's widescreen, but we can see it picking up license plates, some low accuracy, some high accuracy. Uh, and I'll show you guys this, this video once it actually finishes and I can show you uh, the full, full speed. But as you can see, it's detecting it uh, pretty high frame rate. It's a little bit slow, a little bit delayed, um, like laggy. But uh, for my GPU, not the strongest GPU, it's not too bad, actually. Um, so it's doing a pretty decent job. And you can see that it actually every frame, it outputs the frames per second that we're getting. We're getting roughly on average around 12.5 to 13 frames per second, uh, which isn't too bad. If you're running this strictly on CPU, you would likely see half of this. Uh, so maybe anywhere between like three frames per second to six frames per second. And just like the images, it actually saves your results if you have the flag enabled to the detections folder as results.avi file, which is another type of video file. So we can actually go ahead and actually just open this and see it running, detecting with 90 confidence, 50 confidence. Uh, grabbing the license plates from the video uh, with uh, decent accuracy, uh, pretty high accuracy. You can see here 99 at some point. So the closer it is, uh, the better it is at detecting. The farther away the object is, the more in the background, it's going to get a lower accuracy uh, as expected. Um, but overall, we can see that it successfully ran on the video, which we like to see, love to see it. Um, and also in my, if you haven't seen my previous video in this repository, uh, README, I go over how to run uh, using TensorFlow Lite. And just like up above, I have the commands here to save your model, your custom model as a TensorFlow Lite um, model. So if you're trying to run either on a mobile application like Android or iOS, or you're trying to run your custom object detector on let's say a Raspberry Pi, or a Jetson Nano, any edge device, you're going to want to go this route right here. It's almost the exact same as above, so I'm not going to show it. And the commands are right here to follow along with. So you're just going to go in everyone that says custom, you're going to run these, convert, and then detect. And you can actually run it on video as well um, using the above command with the appropriate flag. Uh, so it works on video images all the same. And I didn't show above, but you can actually run your custom object detector on webcam as well. And there's a command up above and the normal TensorFlow that shows that. Um, so I'm not going to go over this because I want to keep this video short, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, and as well, there is a TensorRT. You can do it to custom on TensorRT if you guys are super, super advanced in trying to optimize 
uh, as, mo as much as you can. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please smash that like button. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. It means a lot and it helps my channel grow. So thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed this one.